Hey guys, is your lawnmower engine governor giving you problems? Maybe a failed internal governor engine's racing on you? You're gonna wanna watch this video. All right guys, Scott with Flip and Customize. Remember to subscribe and keep supporting us. We appreciate it, helps us make these videos. What we got today is actually a really big lawnmower engine. It's like a 35 horsepower-ish, uh, big V-twin Kohler on a um, wood miser sawmill. And not our average thing, uh, but what is happening is with the customer is the engine literally started racing away. We went over to try to look at it and help him out and look at the uh, governor adjustment and everything to do with it and everything's pointing to an internal failure so we got to get this thing off the shop and dig into it see what we got Let's get a hold of this bad boy all right this is what we're dealing with here the Kohler command pro 38 which i believe is actually like a 35 horsepower um, it's stone cold right now, so you're gonna choke it to start it and I would start it up for you to show you But what's happening is the governor itself goes to the wow wide open throttle position Like you ever there's a kid and you bypass your governor Which is right in here and the thing just starts screaming on you well We've gone through the adjustment procedure and it's done nothing So that leads me to believe that inside of here and I'll show you in a second um so behind all of this stuff that we got to take off which sucks um there's a plastic governor assembly and those can fail and fall apart and this thing has like i think almost 4000 hours on this original engine which is pretty darn impressive but they were up on their maintenance so the thing has held up pretty well but we're going to start stripping it down and get into the internals so i can get a better look and hopefully we diagnosed it properly so I kind of went ahead and ordered a whole bunch of stuff that is typical that you're going to need, like the new crankcase cover gaskets. This is half the that outer half of the engine's coming off. New crank seals. Here's our governor itself. Um, let me grab that out of this bag and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, these are literally plastic, and I, they probably do make an upgraded one. And the little weights fly out on it, um, basically. And what happens is these shear and they fall apart. Hopefully things just fell right down the oil pan because we're banking on this is what's wrong with it. Uh, I got a new uh, crank bearing as well and an oil pump since we're in there to do that as well. All right, so not a direct how-to, but basically I don't work on wood misers every day, but we got to get rid of some of this so we can go ahead and get to the engine itself to actually start this procedure. So I'm just going to be pulling shrouds off and all that fun stuff for now. And I'll check back with you and get it to a point where I can start showing you. All right, guys, hat is backwards. You know what's serious. No, I'm kidding. Um, so we're only in our first shroud, and I've already identified a few more problems, which is mm, typical. These things see a lot of wear and a lot of vibration. And that's the alternator guard itself for the alternator belt. It's basically riding on the main belt itself because the bolt, little tab here, broke off and either vibrated loose or pulled through down here. So it's just riding on the belt. So there's something else that we're going to have to fix as we go through the assembly procedure. But I'm hoping now that this guard is off, we get this guard off, the alternator belt off, we're able to get this belt off, then we can take this clutch assembly apart and the exhaust, and then I can kind of show you a little bit better. All right, just an update. That took a while, but we were able to pull off the uh, main pulley assembly off the crank itself. Um, so that was a big thing I was a little concerned with, that it wouldn't come off without hitting everything and then having to take the whole engine off. We didn't want to do that. Um, but now we can get to the crank itself, so we got to pull the exhaust off. Um, this bracket assembly, blow everything off, clean it up, and then start taking the engine cover off to get to that governor. But as you can see, we've run out of the daylight, and the shop's too full to bring it into the shop, and the freaking thing is long. So I'm working on it outside. It's actually going to pour tomorrow, so we're covering this all up for the night, and we'll hit it when the sun shines again. All right, I guess I better buy a lottery ticket because the exhaust bolts all came out no problem. We finally got everything off and ready to pull the cover. But before I do that, I'm gonna clean this shaft up with some memory cloth and 
clean this cover up a little bit more, then we can go ahead and pull the cover and see what's going on in there and get you a better look at the uh, governor assembly. All right, we got it cleaned up and the shaft's been emery cloth, so we got the majority of everything out and clean. So the uh, risk for contamination and stuff getting into the crankcase is a lot less now. We blew it all off. Um, normally you could um, identify the fasteners by numbering them, take a photo however you want. You could number them one, two, three, and go all the way around. Because sometimes these are different lengths. I believe on this engine, these are all the same length. So I'm going to take a gamble on this one. Uh, I'm not too concerned with it. I, like I said, I believe these are the same length. I'll still put them in some type of order as I put them on to here. But that's about it. And again, this is the governor assembly. In here, we're getting to. It's behind this cover. Um, so now we'll pull the cover off and... I'm hoping to find a damaged governor gear or a damaged something when we pull this apart. Really hoping. All right, we thought we'd get lucky and be able to pull this right off the end of the crank, but we're now we're hitting this pulley over here. However, it was enough to pull it out to actually see what's going on in here. And as you can see, if you look down into the bottom of the engine, yeah, that there be pieces of the governor, which is actually up here. So as suspected, it has completely failed and it's exactly what we thought, which is a good thing because I would have hated to find something else. So now we're gonna take off a few more things to get this cover off so we can start the repairs. But that's what happens essentially. That's a plastic gear in there and they do fail. Um, this has a ton of hours on it, so it's not uncommon. Um, and then we pop a new one in and a new oil pump over at it, which is back here in the cover and a new seal and a few other pieces and parts at it at the same time. All right, we got the engine case half here because we were able to take off that other pulley and get it out of the way. The oil pump itself is down in here. Uh, we are gonna take that apart and get that replaced since we're already this far. However, there's so little left to the governor disintegrated that I'm not sure of how it's assembled and even the diagram in the manual is pretty vague. So I gotta do a little research before I stick this back together and make sure that it is in fact together properly. And that's the new assembly right there. And how it works is centrifugal force, the weights push out and move that lever. How it moves that lever is what I gotta figure out and how it mounts on the shaft. So I gotta do a little research and get everything cleaned up. I get it all packed away for the night and I'll be back. All right, one thing I wanna show you guys about this governor assembly, and it's different than most governors that just push on an on a uh, actuating arm. So let me pull these out of the way. There is no good videos out there or good illustrations on how to do this and the customer had uh tried to adjust it not knowing it was broken and this was way up here so i didn't have anything to go by and the gear was disintegrated so it was kind of flying blind but we figured it out and it took a while so that's like you know like you know the, the uh, governor arm right there this goes down here somewhere in this in this vicinity and that will get adjusted i apologize i'm trying to man a light at the same time then you have these two spacers if you will I just dropped. Um, one goes back to, see, against those fingers right there. One goes front to, right in front of it, and it's basically just serving as a spacer. Push them all the way back. You see the detent on the shaft right there? This goes like this around that spacer right there. So let me show you what that'll look like when this space is engaged. So if you look at this thing right here, the uh, weights fly out as the speed goes up and as it uh, slows down they close back in so this one is actually riding let me get it in here so you can get a better view sorry one-handed apologize so like this roughly that this end of the spacer is like so so like they nose into each other like that that one's back too this one's front and this assembly slides over that until it locks into the detent 
and that is basically it for this assembly there's another style depending on your model number it would use a different one of these not this particular one this setup and it comes with bowls so you got to check your model number this ch uh, 980 this is the setup it has so after we get this on and engage with the gear and this does not have to be timed with the gear this goes on slides on then you go through the adjustment procedure and i'll do that with you um after because it's not that big of a deal it's um more confusing to say it than it is to do it if that makes any sense so i just wanted to show you that all right guys and just like that this assembly as i just showed it has been slid on and is locked into the detent on the shelf the two spaces are in there one is back two against those fingers and remember this we loosen this up so this is part of the adjustment procedure okay but this is locked in it does not move it's engaged with the gears it does not need to be timed the two spaces are in there one is against the fingers, the other one is locked into the centrifugal weights, which as those move outward, that whole assembly slides, which is gonna activate this arm right here. So there's nothing on the end of this. This shaft rides in the other case half. So as far as the adjustment procedure goes, is basically the springs are tied, it holds the throttle wide open, which it is, and then while the throttle's held wide open, you rotate this cross shaft right here, clockwise as you're viewing it from the end of the shaft so that way okay away from me to take any play out and at that point when the weights move it's going to move that shaft and move the throttle accordingly all right all right now that we've got our governor assembly in and we'll go through the adjustment procedure once this cover's on because you kind of need this cover on to do that i'm going to go ahead and uh pop off this cover for the oil pump we'll get the oil pump changed out and a new seal put in that um, just so we can throw this cover back on. All right, I should also mention that another reason to take the oil pump and the pickup tube and all that stuff off of there is because remember the the uh, governor gear assembly basically exploded. So we want to make sure that nothing got into here. And there's a screen on the sump, so nothing should get in there. But one, we're replacing this as well, um, just because it has 4,000 hours on it. We've gone this far. Let's throw a new, a new uh, pump at it and make sure we don't have any contaminants in here and we can blow out all the ports. So. Um, just a side note, uh, depending on the engine you got, a lot of times you won't have this assembly in it. But if you do, on this big uh, Kohler, it's a good time to check that out. Because the last thing you want is a piece of that plastic governor gear stopping all the oil flow. And one other thing we do is we always mic. Um, throw a dial caliper on your old oil pump just to make sure you got the right parts. Because that's oftentimes the case. Sometimes it gets misboxed. The wrong part number you name it but we got lucky i say we got lucky we got the right part in so we went ahead and put a new seal on the cover um the new oil pump is in there and that's going to engage with the end of the cam uh on there as well so we'll go ahead and get that buttoned up change the outer seal so we can put the cover on all right everything's cleaned up we got a new seal in the other side oil pumps all in and don't forget your new gasket you can go ahead and throw some dabs of silicone on here to hold it in place which we will do and then it goes on to the machine and we'll do the governor adjustment all right, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a hole right there in the end of this cross shaft. Now again, this throttle bracket on the cross shaft is loose. The cover is on. The throttle's in a wide open position. And we're gonna rotate this cr uh, cross shaft in the direction the throttle goes. So basically, if you watch my handle, up like this, towards the front or the flywheel of the engine. So right now, I moved it already, but I'll move it back down so you can see. It doesn't move much, and all you're doing is you're taking the play inside the engine out so we rotate that up until it stops which is right there it's stopped we hold it in that position and then you tighten the lock nut again with the throttle wide open and that lock nut uh, has a torque of like 63 inch pounds so again rotate it up towards the, the uh, wide open throttle position so clockwise if you're facing the end of the shaft and it, tighten this up to i think it's 63 inch pounds or just good and tight just uh, snug it up and that is the adjustment procedure on the governor on these things it's that easy but it is different than some because some it's uh, counterclockwise not this one it is different and that'll get you your baseline to get this thing running properly all right we got our governor all adjusted the uh, engine cover itself crankcase cover is all torqued down we're going to go ahead and put the uh, pulley assembly on the exhaust on put some new gaskets in it and then it's all accessories beyond that. And depending on your application, this is on the sawmill, so it's got a lot of stuff going on over here. Some may not be that complicated, so I'm not gonna get into that. It's not that big of a deal. However, it was more to show you the governor and the governor assembly. I will do a startup at the end here to kind of show you the difference because 
before with that failed governor, you started it up, it literally went to wide open throttle. So you should see a significant difference now. Should not go to uh, wide open throttle until you engage the blade on this in this situation. Uh, that's the only way to get wide open throttle on this one. All right, we got this thing all back together and ready for a startup now. Again, we went through the governor adjustment procedure and that is all you should have to do when you initially set this thing up. So depending on how the RPMs are set up on, on your machine when you engage it, you might have to play with that and adjust that. But on this one, you start it and it should basically be running at an idle or 1200 RPM-ish. And then when you engage the blade, because it's a sawmill, that's when the RPM should come up automatically. Not when you first start it and it go to the wow position because of what happened to the governor being destroyed. So let's go ahead and start it and I'll show you. All right, not super familiar with these, but our choke's there. This is our throttle lever, lever, and I can show you how it works with this one, just so you know, without starting the engine, is it's basically at an idle right now, and then you engage the blade. See that lever move? It, the RPM goes up when you engage the blade. You disengage the blade, it goes back down. Where this thing was wide open all the time, and it was not the throttle lever. It was straight up the governor. So let's start her up. Should be idling. Maybe. Maybe again. Hold on, I gotta reach up and choke it. There it is. So, that shouldn't climb up, and that's a good running RPM for an idle, especially for this sawmill. Um, and therefore, before when you started this thing up, it went right to the screen. Wow, wide open throttle position, which is not good. I mean, not good. Um, so the customer was uh, good enough to shut it right down because they knew something was wrong. Uh, and then we saved this engine. So, this, like I said, this has 4,000 hours on it, and they should be good to go for a while yet. So, now the RPMs will come up when we engage the blade. So, we'll go ahead and engage the blade. That's when the, the RPMs come up in the way it should be running now. Disengage it, back to an idle. And shut her off. So, I hope this video helped you guys, um, mainly for the function of the governor on this um, CH980 35 horsepower V-twin Kohler, so the big boys. Um, even if it's in a different application, that internal governor is basically the same, and so is in the adjustment. So, I hope this helped. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and the like button, and follow us, Flippin' Customize. Customize.